attendance tonight. But before we open the meeting, let's do a town sound check. Um, hello, hello. Good, good. I can hear you loud and clear, Mr. Gito. Uh, Ms. Bruce, I'm just going down the hall. Hello. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. McCriskey. I am here, Madam Chair. Thank you. I saw Mr. Cavey. Is that present? Hopefully oh, you can hear me? yes. Uh -huh. All right. So it looks like I did a, a sound check. Everyone um, is a okay. Let me see. T Tom oh. was here earlier. I I don't see him now. So Tom. It looked like he was having some audio issues and may have turned off and, and attempted to come back on. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll call the meeting to order of the select board on Tuesday, March 14th, 2023 at uh, 6.05 p.m. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion to call the meeting to order, please? So Mr. made. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 A roll Madam, call. Yeah, Madam Chair, because of uh, the, the remote, all the votes have to be done through a roll call. Okay. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, so the motion to open the meeting and it was seconded. So all in favor, Mr. Gito? Yes. Uh, Mr. Cavey? Yes. Uh, Mr. McCriskey? Yes. Um, Mr. Carrara is not here, but I am here. So that's um, four to one. And I'll roll call uh, Mr. Gito. I'm still here. Great. <laughs> Mr. Cavey? Here. Great. Uh, Mr. McCriskey? I think I'm here. You are here. Thank you. And um, Mr. Carrara is absent today. And I am here. I ask you to stand if you are able to salute our flag. Can someone uh, bring up a flag or if you have one in your office, Mr. McCliskey? Oh, yes. If you're able, I ask that you stand and salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag right. of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the, the republic for which we stand, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, everyone. In accordance with Governor Baker's declaration of June 16th, 2021, granting certain pandemic related authorizations related to public board and town meetings and recently extended until March 30th, 2023, this meeting will be conducted virtually via Google Meets. The meeting will be recorded by SMAC Cable Television, a recording of the meeting transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings will be posted on the town's website and or smack as soon as possible after the meeting. Times are approximate and items may be taken out of the order, out of order at the chair's discretion. Uh, we're having our meeting remotely today due to the inclement weather we are having and the announcement that we received earlier today in preparation for um, traffic and the inclement weather. So we will start with uh, select board comments. Um, Mr. Gito. None. Okay. Mr. McCriskey. Uh, nothing at this time, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cavey. I have no comments, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, and I have no comments. We'll move right along to town manager comments. Mr. Calter. You might start on mute, Tom. Go on. We're just, we'll move right along. We'll come back to uh, Mr. Coulter. So, citizens' comments. Are there any citizens' comments? With that being none. <laughs> We'll move right along to our 
consent agenda items. I would like, uh, before we start, uh, 5A, approval of open meeting session. Oh, I'm sorry. I would like to announce it was 5C, that is. Consider release of executive session meeting minutes of April 26, 2022. This item is being tabled because it was previously released back on July 5th, 2022. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Oh, I have one item I would like to pull. Okay. Okay. Uh, that item is um, 5B, Stoughton Public Health Association Annual Evaluation and Policies. Janice Bruce. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for having me tonight on the consent, consent agenda. Uh, annually, I present my um, annual evaluation for the previous year. So we're looking at 2020. Uh, I submitted all the uh, materials electronically, so you should have them available. Uh, we do this as um, a way to inform our governing body what's going on with our certified home care agency and to get feedback. And we also look for acceptance of our annual evaluation and any policy changes that we had. Um, and it is part of our condi conditions of um, participation under the Medicare, under CMS, that we um, have any new policies um, accepted by our governing body. So um, I know you probably all have the annual evaluation. I'll just go over just a few highlights of the previous year, 2022. Um, if I was thinking about it today, um, where we were last year, and if all I could think of was the debate that we were having for town meeting, if we were gonna do it in person or not, and it was kind of back and forth and we did have it in person. So thinking back, uh, the beginning of last year, kids were still in masks in school and it felt like uh, it was gonna be the never ending COVID, but I think 2022 was a really great transitioning year for uh, public health and for everybody in the and healthcare in the community. Um, I think partially that's due to the fact that we have vaccines. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Is anybody else hearing that? Yes. I don't know why that is. I think it's coming from a, a town manager's uh, microphone. I'm, I'm sorry to say. Okay. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, so, I think I would say 2022 was a great year for transitioning. I feel like uh, we really got a handle on it and mostly due to the fact that uh, vaccinations were widespread, you can get them available at pharmacies, COVID tests were much more readily available and people had a lot more confidence and knew that, kind of knew the rules that if you were sick, stay home. And if there was a doubt you wore a mask um, and th that kind of a thing. So. I feel like we were leaps and bounds last year. We no longer have to um, do contact tracing. Part of last year we we did, but you know that went away. So we don't even get reported anymore from DPH in our Maven database, which we check daily for any communicable diseases. But it was at that one point that we were just inundated, and now we know it's still there are cases out there, but it's just not the, to the same intensity. Um, but however, flu cases were on the rise this year due to the fact that I think a lot of people were either so protected last year and not exposed due to masking. And maybe some people didn't get the flu vaccine because they were getting the COVID-19 vaccines. But um, hopefully this is the end, March is usually the end of flu season. So that should be a lot better too. Um, one thing that we're mandated to do by our, our regulations is to have a quality improvement project. And actually one of the things that um, it, it states in the regulations is that we have to keep our governing body in the loop with what our project is. And our project is in preventing potentially avoidable rehospitalizations. And we are doing that with a focus on med teaching with our patients and their caregivers. So that's our current project. 
and we have done a lot of different activities to um, try to um, improve how we teach patients, how we assess patients in their ability to manage their own medication, um, caregivers, and stressing the fact that medications, medication errors do account for a lot of um, emergent care because people may have be skipping their meds when they should be taking them or they took them wrong or they didn't know to notify their doctor when they were having um, a side effect that they sh should be reported. So that's a quality improvement project that we've been working on and we've done a lot of initiatives with patients in that regard. Um, the uh, Pardon me, Madam Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. All right, I had to get off my computer and just call it in my phone for whatever reason the speakers aren't engaging. Judy, sorry to interrupt you, please proceed. Oh, that's okay. Um, so the other thing that um, GPH looks at that we are adhering to is something uh, Chief Carroll and um, Deputy the De Assistant Chief Maycumber know is about our emergency preparedness activities. Um, they came and did a wonderful tabletop exercise for the VNA earlier this year as to how we would handle any interruption in service if in, in the event of um, an event that prevented us from um, normal uh, day, daily routines. And that was great. And they do look at, um, we do them not only because DPH requires us to do it, but we also know how important it is that we have emergency plans for each of our patients. When we admit them, we go over uh, their own personal emergency uh, preparedness plan. So we would we have done that. And when DPH came in in December, they looked over all of our emergency plans. They were very impressed because being a town-owned VNA, we naturally have um, a, an interaction constantly with our town emergency staff. So we feel like there's an, a nice working relationship there and we're very we're very grateful uh, to have the support. Um, and then, no, I don't wanna go on too long. I know you have a busy agenda. The other thing too that we worked on this past year was a, a new assessment form. This was huge. It was released in January 1st. It's a new patient assessment form. It's, um, we always have assessment forms, but this one here happens to contain specifically a mental health assessment for patients that we take on to services. That is the only um, new policy that I submitted, and that's the one that will need to be approved. And basically what it does is we have a standardized test that we, or tests that we do that are also done in the continuum from the hospital to a skilled nursing facility, and then we do the same test. And basically we needed a protocol that if we saw somebody without any documentation of like, say we noted them to be really confused on the first visit. And that was not something that was documented anywhere in their referral and the, or whatever. We needed a protocol as to how to handle it as um, a significant change. So that's why we have this in place so that our staff know that if we notice um, something that is unusual, which we would have done anyway, but we want to spell it out because this actually is a standardized test which categorizes people with differenti differentiating from just like a dementia kind of confusion to, or to something that's much more severe um, that could be uh, like a delirium. So that's, that's something that's really um, a, a big change in home care this year. Um, so that's the only policy. And then I just wanted to mention that this year we made 2,338 home visits. Our revenues were $514,728, which was about $143,000 less than our operating costs. This is um, something two years in a row that we have fallen below our operating costs, which you know we're trying very hard. And I, I, there's a couple of factors I believe might be contributing to that. Um, but that being said, um, we have been very busy. We've gotten a few new health insurances on board. We're, we're looking to be able to expand our patient um, uh, caseload as, as we can for our Stoughton residents in touching towns. Um, 
And and one thing I included in the packet, which I'm very proud of, is our um, patient satisfaction report. And patients that have us are very, very satisfied. And we um, we actually come in higher than the average for Massachusetts, Massachusetts and national home care agencies. So that's something I'm really proud of. So, and that's it. And if anyone has any questions, we be glad to take them. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Bruce. Do we have any questions? Uh, anyone? Yes, Mr. Gito. I'll, uh, I'll talk with you, Janice, uh, not now, okay? Because I didn't get some of those numbers. And okay. I'd like, thank you. And, you. and they're probably in the packet too, Lou, in my annual evaluation, if you got that. I did. Thank you. I'll check. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Vice Chair Cavey. Uh, so I don't have any any questions, but I just you know uh, this is really for a little while. The first time I've, I've had a chance to speak with this person in a while, and I just wanted to uh, to say first of all, it's wonderful always to see you, and um, uh, just from the time I've, I've worked with you, uh, I'm, I feel like we're, we're extraordinarily lucky to have had you uh, working for the town during COVID nineteen. Uh, always do an amazing job, and I just wanted to, to thank you. Now that, you, now that we had a chance to to see each other, somewhat face to face, uh, and just express my my gratitude. Uh, we are extremely lucky to have had you during such a such a, a complex and and difficult uh, several years. So thank you very much for all you've done. Thank you very much for saying that. It takes it takes a lot of people. <laughs> There's a lot of people behind me that are right there helping too. So. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. McCriskey, you had a question or a comment? No, just a comment, Madam Chair. Thank you. And I'm just going to follow up a little bit on Steve's line. Um, Janice, I've known you a long time. You've been there, you know, quite a long time, not, not forever, but uh, you have kept that department running, you know, in a, in a great manner. Uh, you're humble when you say there's a lot of people, but that's, you're right. Your people, the staff are only as good as the manager. Uh, and you've done that consistently and kept that group working together. Uh, you're challenging them to, to think outside the box. You know, you're, you're meeting the needs of the public, you know, more than you'd know because people do talk about it. And your name comes up quite often and how enjoyable it is to work with your office. And these are some of the seniors that I've dealt with, you know, throughout the town. So uh, that's a, you know, a tribute to the style that you bring, you know, as the director of that uh, position. So uh, in Steve's words as well on what you had with COVID, and how you kept that is going and you were as accessible as you could be, you know, to the residents during that time and delivering resources, you know, at the same time is a, it's a great thing. So every year you come here, it's a, it's a great thing because it's always upbeat and positive and uh, you're always smiling and I don't know how you do that. So you have to teach me sometimes, but uh, <laughs> thanks so much for what you do and please pass that on to your staff as well. Oh, thank you so much. And I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. And I agree with the previous speakers. Uh, congratulations on your leadership and the department and the services you provide to those that are age 65 years and older and those that are on disability and all other um, demographics that you helped to serve. And the way you expanded the services uh, to the town of Stoughton and surrounding areas is just phenomenal. So congratulations on all of that. And thank you for bringing this to our attention, the new, uh, the new mental health assessment that you're implementing. So I think that is just top notch. So thank, thank you. you. Madam Chair, may I make a comment? Which is Tom. <laughs> oh, hi, Tom. Yes, of course. <laughs> I just, I want to tell all the board members how much I appreciate your comments with respect to the VNA organization and Janice uh, in, in general, um, or specifically, pardon me, um, Janice and I speak all the time about the financials associated with the department, and she stresses all the time uh, that that the expenses uh, are, are greater than the revenues. And I remind her quite often that we, we know that the Medicare rules have changed, and even the private sector VNAs are struggling to break even. But the bottom line is that if it's a Stoughton resident, they take all comers, whether they have uh, Medicare or whether they don't have Medicare. 
And I know, Madam Chair, you and the other board members have made it clear to me uh, that our seniors uh, are, are just as important as our children as we consider investment decisions for the town. And I can tell you with firsthand knowledge that, that Janice and her team uh, address every call from every senior uh, coming from Stoughton uh, as if it was their mother or father. And you know, I'm, not, I'm never gonna say be damned the financials because I know that's important, but I also know that each one of the members of the board have made it a priority to serve our seniors. And for that, uh, I know Janice is grateful and, and I'm very grateful. So just thank you. Thank you. This is wonderful. With that, uh, I'll set a motion to accept. Madam Chair. Oh, yes. Um, it's just that I don't have a copy of the agenda. So before you uh, approve the consent agenda, if you just list the items you're approving, please. Yes, I certainly will, uh, Mrs. Walsh. Item Thank five, you. Sure. items five A, approval of open open session meeting minutes of February twenty eighth, twenty twenty three, and March seventh, twenty twenty three. The second one is five uh, B, Stoughton Public Health Association annual evaluation and policies. And as a reminder, item number 5C uh, was tabled because it was previously approved on July 5th of year 2022. So items A and B, <laughs> items A and B, a motion to approve. I move that we approve the consent, uh, consent agenda items. Uh, 5A and 5B. Second. All in favor? Aye. And Aye. I will do a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Gito? Yes. Uh, Mr. McCriskey? Yes. Uh, Ms. Vice Chair Cavey? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Unanimous decision. Thank you very much. Thank and you. <laughs> thank you. Have a nice evening. Um, I'll go back to item number three, uh, town manager comments. Uh, Mr. Coulter, did you have a comment for tonight's meeting? Yes, Madam Chair, just one um, uh, one announcement. We received a letter, it's in your package, dated February 17th, 2023, uh, from the Department of Housing and Community Development uh, regarding the determination of interim compliance under Mass General Law 40A, Section 3A. And if, you, if I may, it's a very brief letter, but it's something to celebrate and reflect the great work that Pam is doing in economic development. Dear Manager Carlton, the Department of Housing and Community Development is in receipt of the action plan submitted by Stoughton on January 19th, 2023. Thank you for taking this step as outlined in the compliance guidelines. I am pleased to inform you that the DHCD approved the action plan and that Stoughton has achieved interim compliance. This compliance is valid until your due date for district compliance, which is 1231-24. Please be advised that pursuant to section 9A, section three of the guidelines, a community's progress in implementing their action plan may be independently evaluated as part of the application review process for any of the funding sources that are subject to compliance with section 3A. We appreciate the middle of this action plan describing Stoughton's planning efforts related to section 3A district compliance and wish your community the best of the implementation of its components. If you have any questions, please give me a call. And it's from Jennifer Maddox, Under Secretary. And what this means <clears throat> is that as a community uh, uh, located near a rail station, uh, Pam has, has completed the application for interim compliance. With this comes an open door uh, for all of the uh, MassWorks and DHCD um, uh, funding, uh, strike that, um, uh, grant applications that we intend to apply for. Without this pre-qualification, uh, we would be immediately disqualified. So hats off to Pam for her fine work. And uh, now we'll begin work on a Mass Works grant um, uh, with respect to the train station and other projects. Thank you, Madam Chair. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for sharing that great news. We'll move right along to item number six and that's the fire station project presentation. 
Uh, I will recognize Chiefs Carroll and Nate Cumber and uh, Pomeroy Associates. Great, thank you very much. This is Taylor McDonald, Pomeroy Associates. Uh, there was a, um, a small PowerPoint, I believe included in your agenda. I can pull that up um, if you wouldn't mind and share my screen and, and go through that. Please. There's some uh, good updates that we'd like to discuss. All right, so everybody can see that, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, the first thing I really wanted to do was just give a, an update since I think the last time we were in front of the select board, obviously there's been a lot of communication um, with the board uh, going back and forth, but we haven't done a, a really a full presentation. Um, so with that dates back last to when we were in the middle of design, we were in design development. So since that time, um, I'll start at Freeman Street and then we'll go back to Prospect um, just because Prospect will spend a little more time on. But as far as Freeman Street, um, what the design team has done is, is they started that design along the same time that they were working on the Prospect Street um, building. The plan was to, to not start that so quickly, um, but speaking with the town and, and needing to get some estimates for that, um, most notably for the ARPA fund. Um, we had to get a schematic design done and a schematic estimate done on that project. So the design team decided to step that up and they were basically designing two buildings at once, um, which which worked out great for us. So um, they were able to complete their schematic design um, and then we got the schematic estimate. Um, and that's really just the first part of design and the first part of estimating. From there, they'll go to design development, do another estimate, and then construction documents and another estimate, which is the same route that Prospect Street took. So um, also on Freeman Street, what we did was we um, completed the hazmat survey, did our site plan, uh, our site survey, and um, what we're doing now is, is starting our site plan permitting. So that's bringing the project through CONCOM, through planning board, um, getting those plans ready. We haven't scheduled anything yet, but um, the design team is starting to work on those plans. So now that that's kind of uh, running parallel to um, Prospect Street, since we spoke, what we've done at Prospect Street was the construction documents were completed. Um, we, can treat, we completed our construction document estimate. We completed the contractor pre-qualification process. And if you're not aware of what that is, any, any project that is estimated to be over $10 million has to go through a contractor pre-qualification process. So um, we put out an RFP, contractors send us their packages, um, 150, 200 plus packages that we have to go through and pre-qualify all the filed subbids and all the contractors for this project. We then come up with a list that is then sent out to the bidders saying these companies are allowed to bid on this project. So um, that process was done. Um, we completed our interior and exterior finishes selection. Uh, we hired a commissioning agent um, that'll be working alongside the design team for the HVAC system um, during the project and after the project to commission our HVAC equipment. We gained our conservation commission approval. Um, we have our final meeting with the planning board. Uh, I think it's our fifth, fifth meeting with the planning board. Um, this coming uh, Thursday, the 23rd, um, that uh, we're, we're ready to just give them our final plan. And I think we're gonna get sign off. We've, we've dealt with all the issues. Um, we did the bid. What we did was separated the demo and hazmat from the project itself. So we completed the bid process of demolition and hazmat for the building and the hazmat removal and demolition of the building was completed. So the building is down. Um, everything is rough graded out there, and that went uh, really well. So um, we completed a traffic study uh, that the planning board asked us to complete, um, and we did our construction bidding. So our bids came in last week on March 8th, um, and I will go through that. I'm going to share a different screen here. Um, just bear me with me one second. Any questions on any of the work kind of to date? All right, I will continue. All right, so uh, what I have here is uh, a bid report 
um, that we put together on the bids that came in. So we had a, a total of five bids and um, our lowest bidder was CTA Construction Managers, LLC. Um, next was GNR, then M. O'Connor, Boston Building Bridge, uh, Boston Building Bridge Corp, and GBW. We had a total of, I believe, eight um, general contractors that pre-qualified to bid this. So we got a, a good, good showing out of that eight. We had five bid on this. The reason the others didn't bid is they're probably too busy. Um, it is very busy out there and very competitive. Um, but what we did see was a uh, low bid and even the top three bids, a, a very good packing of bids there, which is a good indication that the documents are being received well. They're looking at the same things. They're understanding the documents. Um, all the, uh, the estimators are looking at it the same way. It's excellent. There's a really a 1.1% difference between CTA and GNR and a 1.8% difference between CTA and M. O'Connor, our, our third bidder, which is really excellent. Um, anything, you know, under two or 3% is, is very good when we're bidding these projects. So, um, we needed to be under uh, a total construction value for this project of, of $19.3 million, $19 million, dollars uh, and, and $60. Um, so our bid that came in was 17830000 So that is, uh, just a, a, a smidge below 1.5 million under what we were estimating to be uh, on for this project. So it's a 7.7% uh, below our estimated value, which is absolutely incredible. Um, leading up to this bid, we were seeing and hearing projects coming in over budget. Um, uh, everybody knows what the construction industry was doing. Uh, we stayed the course and we did you know, three strong estimates. Um, and then even some value engineering at the very end to just make sure that this was really going to come in where we needed to come in. And, and, and we hit a good time in bidding um, where construction prices, I wouldn't say they're coming down, but they're starting to level off. And I think uh, general contractors are starting to get competitive again. Um, because before the, the, the numbers we were seeing were just astronomical. So we feel we hit it very good. Um, and we've, again, done a review of CTA. Uh, we've uh, pre-qualified them already, so our recommendation to the town is, is going to be to move forward with a, a notice of award uh, to CTA construction. Let me just jump back to another screen here. And really, so what our next steps will be. Oh, excuse uh, me for a minute, Mr. McDonald. Uh, absolutely. Mr. Gito raised his hand. Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. McDonald, uh, were there any changes made in uh, in the design of the building uh, that might have caused a cha uh, lower price than your initial uh, uh, design expectation or cost expectation? No, no. We were we were looking at smaller uh, value engineering things like maybe changing materials if we had to. Um, even, you know, maybe lessening some of the, um, some of the soft costs, maybe pulling back on some of the furniture costs, but we actually made a decision, um, after we felt we had really designed this building, um, uh, to the bone, so to speak, in terms of, you know, how far we can go without losing program. Um, and that first estimate came in, we said, look, we could continue to cut this or, or we can stay the course and see this through bidding. And that's what we um, decided to do. And, and we felt that the estimates that we were getting had a lot of fluff in them because estimators, frankly, were just as scared as we were. And they were including a lot of contingency monies. They were including um, a lot of escalation, uh, which right, rightfully so. Um, this very much could have come in um, a lot higher. Um, but they kept telling us, you know, hold on, see this through. And, and um, so, no, we didn't cut program. We didn't cut anything the fire department needs. We didn't cut um, any growth in the building. Um, nothing that uh, really, it, what it came in at what we felt it should have come in at um, in the end. Thank you. Uh, that all of that. Uh, 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 thought of not knowing what uh, what the prices would be uh, makes a lot of sense. And uh, uh, we've had other projects that we've had to uh, 
that were cut back and I think to the detriment of the final outcome uh, when uh, when we looked at initial expectations is the reason I was asking the question. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something that came up, uh, you know, past history of projects and, you know, things that have happened in other towns. And uh, we, we knew it wasn't the right plan to start cutting the building past its its useful life. So uh, we didn't we didn't make that move. Um, all right, moving on, just um, our, my last slide here was kind of just to give an idea of what our next steps will be. So uh, we're in the process of just dotting the I's, crossing the T's with the bid itself. Um, we'll work with the town and the town manager to issue the general contractor's contract, um, get them to mobilize on site, and hopefully we can do something with the town um, and, and do a, an actual groundbreaking. Um, we like to do that and get out there with the shovels and do a ceremonial groundbreaking. Um, I know that we started working on this project in, I think, 2018. Um, so it would be nice nice to finally see that through and, and put a shovel on the ground. Um, so I think that could be a, a great a great little event. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, the really celebration is, is when everybody moves in. But um, that's the plan, and, and we'll discuss that further. And as I talked about with Freeman Street, that's still running in parallel. So uh, we'll pick up the site plan permitting now that we're we're done with the design of Prospect Street. Um, start up design development after the project is underway at Prospect Street, because really, um, if you remember, we need to build Prospect Street, get everybody out of Freeman before we can move over and start working on Freeman. So um, we're going to time that that. Uh, that design process and that bidding so that it's finishing up right as Prospect Street is finishing up as well. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to point out that uh, there is a public information meeting, um, which I'm sure everybody is aware of uh, this coming Monday um, to go over just really the project history, um, where we've been and where we're going. Um, so I'm open to questions and comments. Uh, Mr. Gito raised his hand. I, I think the uh, one of the things that uh, is important to point out is uh, is the star date on your uh, on your Prospect Street project. It's going to be 17 months from now on August 15th, 2024, that uh, people are supposed to be able to move in. So we should keep that uh, that number in mind as we uh, as we move move along. Uh, I guess the second thing that I would, would ask is uh, we're going to have to wait until all of the other projects at Freeman Street and uh, Prospect are done before we can do anything at, uh, at um, Central Street. Is that what I understand? That'll most likely be the sequence, yes. Um, and again, the the work being done at um, Central Street is, is, is going to be putting up partitions, um, making uh, more sleeping quarters. It's it's minimal work, um, but, uh, you know, some of that might be able to start towards the end of, um, you know, Freeman Street, um, you know, being completed. But that is the plan is to really do that at the last leg. And that is also part of the, the total project cost or is that separate? That is separate. That is not part of this total project cost. You know, what it was discussed was uh, that would be handled in-house uh, through DPW or, uh, you know, a department like that. If there is money left over in the project, um, I'm sure that's an avenue too. Um, obviously, we have contingencies, but um, the, the funding is for um, these, these two projects. Thank you very much. Um, Vice Chair Cavey. Oh. Mr. Cavey, I can't, if you're, I don't know if you're muted or. Yeah, sorry about that. There you go. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying a new setting on this. Apparently you can, you can have it set it so that you only talk when you touch the space bar. And oh, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a handy trick, but I, I forgot to do it. So uh, here we are. Um, uh, so I just wanted to thank you very much for all the work you've done. It's, it's been outstanding. Uh, you've stuck with us for a long time and uh, and it's really paying off. Uh, I just appreciate all the work everyone's been doing on this. Uh, I, I have only one question and then just a couple of comments. Uh, the first is, you know, I, I was at 
one of your more recent planning board meetings. Uh, I wasn't there until the end. I don't believe a vote had taken place at that point. Are we still waiting on a vote from the planning board or have, have I, did I just miss one that happened in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, we are still waiting on it. Um, the last two items that we went there for were some question about screening of the HVAC equipment and some fencing around the site. At the end of the meeting, we did come to a conclusion and an agreement upon um, what that would be. It was no screening needed. I mean, we needed to add some fence, um, but the planning board wouldn't vote until they had that that final plan. So um, the architect tested, had to go back. I'm sure it's done now. Glenn is, is on here now and add a couple legs to that fence. And we just need to present that plan and they can say, yes, it's on the plan and, and check that box. So, yeah, yeah, that, that was my understanding was that there, there were some some, you know, reasonable mo modifications, but nothing that that's a showstopper. So uh, we'll move that through uh, through them and, uh, and get their take. So I appreciate you know, moving through that. Um, uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but w when exactly are we looking at something like a groundbreaking? Is that, uh, and we don't have to talk dates, but like, um, you know, is it coming this kind of summer or are we not maybe, maybe in the fall or, or is it like a year out or something like that? Oh, oh, the, uh, for a groundbreaking um, this yeah. spring. This spring. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. That's more or less what I was expecting. Absolutely. As long as, um, you know, getting the contractor on board goes smooth, smoothly, the, you know, the contract itself, um, which we don't see any major holdups, but um, yes, we'd like to see that happen this spring. And the last, uh, which I know you addressed, but I just kind of want to dig down a little bit more into it. There was a lot of um, concern uh, as inflation started to get pretty wild. And this was industry wide. Uh, every, you know, everybody I know in construction uh, has been sort of beating the same drum. Uh, and though we benefited from you know the our timing of of uh, of of using you know leverage of, of essentially using debt to to pay for this project and getting out of the bond market early, uh, some of those those benefits were were sort of lost in the the, the following inflation that happened shortly after. Um, from what what I've seen in 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 the the the, the bids that you shown us, uh, we're, we're seem to be in a very healthy position actually uh there's it doesn't doesn't look maybe i'm missing some component of it but uh somewhere in the 18 to 20 million dollar range uh it seems like we're we're still well within uh healthy you know financial position here that our our, our, our budgets are are, are um, at this point seem fairly tight and also uh, accommodate all of our needs uh obviously will be items that that will require potential you know, change orders and whatnot that you know, some unforeseen costs but but um uh, from what i'm seeing it looks like we are on target to hit hit our our budgetary goals uh do you feel like that's that's a fair assessment yeah absolutely we feel the same way um we if it came in right at the number um we would have we would have felt confident too um so this is just even more breathing room um you know the other you know unknown is uh Freeman Street um, and, you know, what we're going to get when we start renovating that. Um, but there's contingencies built in for that. Um, and we had plenty of contingency built in for, you know, Prospect Street. Like I said, it did come in at, at the number, but this just gives us, you know, more breathing room, um, lets us, um, you know, not take any step back. Everything's going to be uh, the same thing is, is to try to bring this under as much as we can and save as much money for the town. That's what we intend to do in all of our projects. But but yes, we, we feel very good about it, um, and we think uh, it's only going to help the project. Excellent. I, I just uh, just to reiterate my my first comment. Uh, thank you all uh, for the work that you've done. It's been outstanding. Uh, I'm so grateful to have had the chance to work with you and to, and have you guys on on this team to help us out along the way. Uh, I know that there was a, a lot of um, uh, you know ambiguity about where, where markets were going and what project was having projects at different times. Uh, but you've all been outstanding through all of it, and uh, I just want to express my my uh, uh, appreciation for that, sincere appreciation for it. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you, thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you, Vice Chair KV. Any other questions? Uh, yes, um, Mr. McCriskey. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, you know, uh, going to follow up with Steve and agree, and. Um, I don't know if I want to say the pleasure, but I've had uh, the opportunity to attend a lot of the planning board meetings. And uh, I always say with things like uh, or the uh, other various other meetings with the way information has been shared about with the project. Um, I, I think that uh, Pomeroy and Associates and uh, everybody, Taylor and Glenn, you know, everybody that's been there, you know, has really represented the town of Stoughton. 
uh, as a as a majority, uh, as a group, not the you know the complainers and misinformation spreaders and so you know so forth. Um, you kept your word when I asked if the taxpayers were getting their money off the, the last project, uh, their money's worth, and uh, it was stated no, and that was repeated at another meeting. But um, what you've done, um, and you know, with the the activity, Stoughton's a tough town, but you have weathered the storm well. You have been consistent on the information. Uh, everything that you've said, uh, you know, we can expect was there. And in um, the way that you've all conducted yourself as a team at all these public meetings uh, is a, a credit to your organization and the talent of the people there. And uh, I just wanted to thank you here uh, so that everybody hears it in the same place. So thanks very much to all of you. Thank you very much. It's been a, it's a great team, it really has. Thank you, Mr. McCriskey. And I would like to also thank you, uh, Mr. McDonald, for your presentation, for keeping us informed uh, every step of the way of the, the progress on this project. Um, I would now like to open it up if others would like to comment, Mr. Pomroy, our, our chief, <laughs> if they would like to say some closing statements, because we do look forward to the meeting on Monday, March 20th. But since you're here, you, if you would like to say a few words uh, as closing remarks, uh, go at it. Our, our architect, Glenn Garrett, is, is on too as well. So he's um, he's the oh. one that puts the, the pen to paper. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to, Madam Chair, if you may, uh, this is Rick yes. Pomeroy. Um, I'd just like to add one component to what, uh, what Mr. McDonald reported. And he had alluded to it, but I just wanted to stress this. Um, the three low bids, or even the four low bids, are remarkably close to one another. And uh, that's not only a testament, it's a testament to, that the estimators are seeing the same thing, but in reality, what it's telling you is it's a quality set of documents that our project architect, Doran Whittier, has put together. Uh, when you see large spreads and bids, the bidders don't really understand what they're looking at, but when they're that tight, in that, in that volume and that tight, that's, that's remarkable. It's just telling you that there's a quality set of documents that they prepared for this project. Chief Carroll, did you want to say a few words? Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Roberts. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, you know, yeah, although it's 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 still you know a tough road ahead, we, we're we're still working uh, at endless uh, hours. I would say, especially uh, our architects and, and conversing with with our team over here with with the assistant chief and and the team in here along with Palm Roy and the working group within the town. It's, first of all, I wanna thank the select board for, for trusting in us. Um, Cause you know, it is, sometimes it's difficult. There is a lot of um, information out there, which, you know, you, you try to, you try to, um, you know, to give the information, but you know, you can only go so far so much um, and so many forums or platforms to do that in. I would say that uh, one thing that has worked with this team, uh, it, it's been a great team, and it continues to be a great team uh, that I'm part of, uh, is trusting the experts in their in their field and staying in my lane. And um, you know, this is something that we promised the, the townspeople when we were moving forward with this that uh, to build an operational fire station uh, for not only now's needs but but for the future. Um, I can tell you to, to Mr. Gito's question, we have not scaled this back from, from the day we kind of presented this. Uh, sometimes things change in schematic. I'm learning a lot, <laughs> a real lot about, about the, uh, the industry and, and, and how this process works. But the, the building is gonna be built for something that's going to last um, for a very long time here in Stoughton. I, again, I want to thank you for giving, you know, trusting in us as a, as a working group, but also I want to thank all, everybody on the team because, uh, you know, there is a lot of trust that goes into, okay, you're the expert, I'll listen to you, whether it, whether it be, you know, how this process works, design, uh, Glenn has been an all-star, Kayla, Rick, it, they're just so full of information and, it, that allows the ACNI just to stay in our lane of operations for the town of Stoughton and, and, and 
bringing you a better, more efficient, and, and a top-notch fire department and a fire service and EMS service. So again, I thank the select board for um, for the trust. Uh, it, it gives us confidence in, in everything we do. The planning board has been great. I did, you know, everybody's been great. I know there's a lot of questions and, and we're here to answer them. But um, again, and, and thank you for get, allowing us to update. I think it's important. Thanks again. You're welcome. Okay. With that, uh, we can close this uh, item and move right along to our next agenda item, which is item number. Oh, yes, Vice Chair yeah. Cavey. Thank you. Vice Chair Cavey. Yeah, sorry, I was just waving goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then let's all wave goodbye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have one more. Uh, moving right along to our next uh, agenda item, it is item number seven, discussion code of conduct. Now, as you'll recall, um, last year, the draft copy of our code of conduct policy was uh, reviewed. It was sent back for additional comments and edits, and then it was reviewed again, and it was approved by our select board. It was such a serious and so important to us that we wanted to become a part of our culture. So now we're at the phase of implementation and that is spreading it out, implementing it to all of our departments, our boards, commissions, and committees. Um, so with that said, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Coulter. So he can tell us a little bit more how he plans to execute this or actually implement it. And then uh, we'll ask for a vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at the very, and I know the, the public uh, doesn't have the document in front of them, so I, I think if I read section two, which is two very brief paragraphs, it gives a, a comprehensive understanding of what the code of conduct is. It's not simply a, a mode of, of operation or behavior, but it deals with issues such as um, conflict of interest and other issues that the State Ethics Commission uh, lays out in terms of municipal behavior. So if you'll allow me just to read the first two brief paragraphs, I think it'll give folks an understanding of what the document is about, and then I'll speak to how we're going to implement it. Section two says purpose statement. The intent of this policy is to establish a clear statement and guidelines to serve as the standard for achieving and maintaining a high level of public confidence, trust, and professional respect with regard to how the town and its officials conduct business. This policy will define and create a centralized policy with regard to conduct and ethical standards. The select board recognizes the importance of professional standards at all levels of the government, including those who volunteer their time and service on behalf of the town. The board encourages other boards and committees of the town who are not appointed by the selectmen to adopt this standard by reference, thereby creating a unified code of conduct and ethics for the town officials as a standard for expectations of all public officials. It's, um, it's a comprehensive document uh, that through you, Madam Chair, the board has, has um, uh, uh, amended on several occasions um, in, an, in an effort to perfect the document. And uh, I'm very pleased. I've seen code of conduct for the six towns that I represented in the legislature. And I think this document surpasses anything I've seen in the past. Now, a policy is only good as its implementation. So within this document, it, it speaks to the role of the town clerk uh, who has fully embraced her responsibilities in this implementation plan. So every time someone is sworn in, a public official, a volunteer, a board or committee member, uh, they will be asked to not only uh, stay in the office and review the document, but to sign off that they have received the document. Uh, in addition to that, every new employee uh, through our human resource department uh, will also be required to read and, and, uh, and document that they have read it, they understand it, and that they support our code of conduct. Uh, so over the months and years ahead, 
as more and more people uh, uh, understand what we expect of, of all uh, employees and volunteers that serve the town of Stoughton. Um, I think this will become cultural in nature. Uh, it's very important is that we all remind each other uh, of elements of this document. And the way that's typically done is, is every meeting, each board or committee uh, will reference the code of conduct uh, for the town of Stoughton. And, and that we all remind each other, uh, because we're human, uh, when we step outside the four corners of the Code of Conduct. And that way, over months and years ahead, it does become a very important culture of the town and the manner in which we do business. So in closing, I, I, I just want to thank the Board of Selectmen for its leadership on this issue, uh, for a town to take a step back and spend the time, energy, and effort uh, to, to make a commitment to such a standard it is it was one of the compelling reasons uh, that I that I elected to apply to the town of Stoughton. I, I think uh, it's a reflection of who we are and who we who we wish to be. And so I want to congratulate every member of the board of selectmen for initiating this effort uh, in this process uh, over a year ago and to stay at it and perfect it until you finished uh, completing this this extraordinary document. So. Uh, I will be circulating it throughout the building and personally handing it to everyone who works in the building. And the clerk uh, will, will do her part with elected and public officials and human resources will do their part in, uh, in, in um, orienting all new employees with respect to the, to the standard. So uh, that is the Stoughton New Code of Conduct. I will send a signatory page to each member of the Board of Selectmen once you've had a chance to reread it in its entirety and, uh, and perhaps even next meeting have a ceremonial signing and then we'll distribute it throughout the building and throughout the town, I should say. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. Any questions um, from my fellow board members? So since we did uh, change, we tweaked it, we made uh, an edit or two since our last approval. I think we should also take another vote or do you think it's necessary because it? I, I think it is absolutely necessary. I'd call for that vote and perhaps even Mr. Gito could, uh, could express to the other board members the, the amendments he made, which I think perfected the document. And then uh, I think it would be an order, Madam Chair, for a motion to adopt and codify this this code of, of uh, code of ethics. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. Mr. Gito. Um, I don't think it's necessary to go back and look at the uh, the, the prior one. I think that uh, that unless there's a concern about what uh, what we're what we're adopting. That we should just do it. Uh, I think that uh, that the changes that I that were made um, made it better. But I don't. But I think that the spirit of the uh, of the document uh, is preserved, and so I think we should just go along. And if we we like it the way it is now, then uh, we should just vote for it. Oh. And I make a motion to do such. Can I get a second? Second. All right. All in favor, Mr. McCriskey. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Aye. Uh, Mr. Gito. Yes. Vice Chair Cable. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Unanimous decision. Thank you all so very much. Um, uh, would you like us to take a vote on the imp implementation plan that Mr. Uh, Coulter described? I like that execution, uh, Mr. Coulter. Well, I look forward to talking with everybody about it. It's part of a very important cultural building process. Thank you. Um, Vice Chair Cavey. Uh, thank you. Uh, unless, uh, you know, unless the, the vote for the, the implementations uh, called for by somebody else, which I'll certainly vote on. Uh, I, I'm reticent to to make a motion like like that or to vote on something like that. Um, 
you know, as a policy board, I think we've, we've identified a policy. Uh, my fear is that that if if uh, our town manager finds that the implementation is not working uh, and needs to pivot, do something else, uh, alter things, uh, that he might feel bound by a vote that we've made. Uh, but I think he has all the authority he needs to proceed with, with the policy and implementing that. So I don't want to um, uh, tie him up with 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 anything. That will prevent him from doing what he thinks is is, is right and is, is using his own best judgment. Uh, but I, I'm I'm willing to be persuaded otherwise. Uh, but I think that we've got the policy, which was 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 our uh, leg of the of the race. And at this point, I, I have full faith that that he can implement this in in a meaningful way. And but part of that is giving him the flexibility to, to make those changes if necessary. Uh, Mr. McCriskey. Oh, well, thank you, Vice Chair Cavey. Mr. McCriskey. Yes, no, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to agree wholeheartedly with uh, with the vice chair. Um, as you know, I've said many, many times, I believe in a strong town manager and we should let the town manager lead. And I agree 100% with Mr. Cavey in this case. Thank you, Steve. And I look forward to having the policy implemented and posted on our website. Was that also your, your intent, uh, Mr. Colton? Yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, I know Trisha is looking in right now and with the, board, with the vote of this board, it'll be posted tomorrow morning. Excellent. Oh. I no further questions on that. Without further ado, we can move right along to item number eight, which is fiscal year 24 budget addbacks. I did, um, see Mr. Bill Rowe joined our meeting and I'll hand it over to our town manager, Mr. Carlson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm glad Bill is on the call. I, I hope his conference uh, is going well. Um, Madam Chair, in front of you, you've got a proposed budget change that we'll present to the FinCom tomorrow evening following your vote this evening. Um, as you know, we finished the budget uh, almost a month and a half ago, and as as uh, as things go, you know, town government is ever changing. We receive assessments from the regional schools. Uh, we receive additional information um, uh, on uh, addbacks like firefighters and in our plans for regional 911. And every one of those changes impacts the budget. Uh, we had an assessor uh, leave us a month ago, and. And, uh, and that causes us to have to reinforce that department. So in front of you right now, and we can get into whatever detail you want, or if you'd like to review it, or if I'll take any questions. This list in front of you reflects the changes in the budget <clears throat> since you voted last on the budget. Uh, as you'll note, uh, at the very bottom, there's a $472,000 uh, reduction in this, in this as well. That reflects the negotiation with our union leaders with respect to health insurance design changes. And so it was it was uh, approximately 5% less as opposed to 30%, it was, it was um, uh, 25%, which changed the amount of money we needed to run through the budget. Uh, Bill can explain that better if you'd, if you'd like to uh, know more about that. So you see uh, for the top items, the add back in, and you see in the bottom, uh, the, the 472 reduction. And so this is what we'll be presenting to the finance committee tomorrow night, which uh, unless there's any further changes that we don't see at this time, will reflect our final budget that we're presenting to FinCom. In order to do so, it would require a vote of the select board uh, to make these amendments to the budget you voted six weeks ago. Through you, Chair Bill, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Mr. Rowe, is, is there anything you would like to add? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. Oh, here he is. Mm -hmm. I see you from the American Home. Um, uh, Mr. Rowe, we cannot hear you. Oh, okay. How about now? Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, um, greetings from UMass Amherst. Um, we, um, I just wanted to, yeah, the, you, the changes I think are self-explanatory over in the left, in the right-hand column. Um, someone has asked me, well, why, when, since the sewer budget went up, why didn't you increase the subsidy? 
percent. Well, it only went up by seven thousand dollars and change. So we're still expecting the um, preliminary assessment from the MWRA. So I think we'll adjust the subsidy at that at that point. So um, it's an immaterial increase. So I, I thought we'd leave the subsidy, the general fund subsidy yeah. as of for now. So, but that's all about it. All uh, all I have to add, unless you have questions on the, any of the specific um, items. Oh, Vice Chair Kavey. Thank you. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, Mr. Rowe, thank you very much for, 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 for speaking into this and also for helping us uh, uh, get through all this. And I have a couple of very, I think, elementary questions, but I'm just, I, more than anything else, uh, I just want to make sure I'm reading the document correctly. So, uh, and so it's, it, this should be a lot of uh, layups for you. It should be pretty easy. Uh, my understanding, we've got, we've got three columns here, general fund, sewer, water. And what I'm seeing is that the sewer and water are both increasing by seven thousand one hundred twenty dollars. Is that correct, or is that money, the like the um, showing up in both accounts, but the increase is only seven thousand one twenty? Another way of saying it is the increase seven thousand, or is it fourteen thousand? Well, the total increase, total increase would be fourteen thousand two forty, and the salary of the department has split half and half. Perfect. Okay, got it. So yeah, seventy-one twenty increase in each. Okay. No, that makes perfect sense. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm great with that. I understand that. In that case, everything else just look lands in the general fund. That's the only thing else that matters. And as I'm seeing, you know, we do have this one increase for the regional schools of about one hundred twenty-two thousand uh, dollars, and then you know, somewhat de minimis increases here and there. But we do, I do see a large decrease in health insurance, and I, I have, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, of Four hundred and seventy-two thousand uh, dollars, and I'm just wondering, given what you know, I must have missed something because how, how did we end up with a decrease in our in our health insurance here? So we we had some plan design changes. So the estimate that uh, came up with, um, I think it was twenty-three point one percent increase for fiscal twenty-four. Okay. Um, we're using the um, the benefits coordinator Deanna is using. 25 percent just just to just as uh, in case as a margin for any increased enrollments that might come along okay so um so that's that's why the decrease because of the plan design changes okay so the, the if, if i'm reading this all correctly uh then then uh uh in this list of 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 uh changes we actually have a net decrease of about eighty thousand dollars ninety three nine twenty two yes uh-huh well, that's for the general fund, but if I also general, yes, yes, over for the general fund, yes, yeah, about yeah. eighty thousand dollars overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so about eighty thousand dollar decrease. Uh, so we're we're uh, uh, when we were talking about add backs, and I was kind of doing the math. I was like, it doesn't look like we're adding anything back. It looks like we're like decreasing. So I, I was wanted to uh, make sure I understood that. So the only thing we're voting on right now is just the the changing of these of these um, uh, values from very essentially just kind of reorganizing Correct, yeah. money mm -hmm. from some accounts into others. Uh, the decrease in health care allows us to, to move money into some of the other accounts, but we're realizing overall um, a net um, decrease in the amount that we're asking for of about $80,000. That's that's uh, summarized it pretty well, sir. Awesome. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what I'm looking at and uh, very, very thorough and thoughtful schedule, but uh, it was helpful to ask. So I thank you very much for that. Yeah, and I just wanted to let you know, we, we, don't, we don't print any new, new budget documents. This was a request of the FinCom. They don't want a new complete budget document until all the changes have been incorporated. So that's why we do this schedule to try to summarize the changes. Yeah, there's there's a proof that, I, but I definitely uh, uh, respect the fact that the, the amount of paperwork that they receive can get can be uh, uh, a real hindrance on their ability to get through the work. So uh, so I appreciate that that, that you're you're um, uh, doing that for them. I think that that's uh, overall going to have. I, I I hope. Uh, provides a real benefit and and increases the uh, the work you know the value of the work they're doing and decreases the time they have to spend doing it. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you very you much, much uh, Vice Chair Kavey. I have a question, uh, Mr. Rowe, regarding Southeast Regional School. Those estimates, how do they estimate up or down, and how how does what is that process to get the information to you? So our Southeastern Regional Rep um, was at the FinCom meeting, and unfortunately, they have uh, the committee has not voted 
the budget for fiscal 24 yet, but she thought this number, the 1,533,296 was, was a, her, her best estimate. So um, we're not we're not sure when the committee is going to vote that. Hopefully, it'll be before the FinCom takes their final vote. But um, she thought that was their um, their best estimate. And it's just a pass through uh, for us. The revenue just pa it does it has no net impact on our operational. That's the municipal side of the budget. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, we show it on the education side, but it's it's oh, basically okay. it's basically a fixed cost. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it does come out of our fixed costs, which increases decreases the you know, the overall amount available if it increases. So, but um, yeah, she thought that was the the best estimate for for now. So it's it's probably a pretty close estimate. Okay, thank you very much for confirming that, uh, Mr. Gito. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Bill, does it, the uh, in the health insurance um, line there there is a payment to people who who decide to have their significant other move into another insurance uh, insurance plan and uh, saving saving us money. Uh, does that payment? come out of this line item or is that somewhere else yes it would come out of this line item thank um, you that that department yes uh-huh so there's an opt-out um for six thousand i think it is six thousand for a family and uh three thousand for an individual plan if they if they opt not to take the uh health insurance and that's built in to the overall you know uh, plan changes which resulted in the decrease estimated decrease in um in the town's match for the uh, health insurance trust. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. If there are no further questions, uh, I believe you wanted uh, a vote on these. That's channels. correct. Okay. I think, Mr. Gito, were you making the motion? I was, but I was muted. Let oh, okay. I thought I saw game. your mouth move. <laughs> <laughs> My lips are moving, but no sound came out to you. But I was reading your lips. I just said, I, uh, make that uh, I, I move that we uh, approve the budget changes uh, on the table uh, as presented uh, as of uh, 3 14 2023. Can I second. get a second? Okay. Um, all in favor? Mr. Aye. Mr. Well, I'm taking a roll call vote. Yes. Mr. McCriskey? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Cavey? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gito? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Unanimous uh, decision. Anything Madam, else? Oh, yes. Chair, uh, point of order. Uh, Mr. Gito, could you repeat the date of the proposed budget changes for the FinCom? I was that talking? Said, I thought he had said 323. 3, 3920 should be. Who is that uh, talking to ends in 25? Is that you, Mr. Coulter? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Your voice is different. Well, I know you. Yeah. So is the date uh, that Lou said in the motion 3923? No, it's 314. Okay. Bill, is, is yours saying 314? 314. Yeah, that, that went out. Um, that went out. Uh, let's see. Last night, Tom. Yeah. Okay, I didn't get that one. Okay. okay. Thanks. I'm good then. Thank you, Matt. Quite welcome. So I think that is all you need, uh, Mr. Coulter. Is the That's all I had, okay. I had the one from Thursday. Pardon me. Okay. If Thank there you. is no further business of the select board, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So made. Second. All in favor, Mr. Gito? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Cavey? Yes. Uh, Mr. McCriskey? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you very much and have a nice evening, everyone. And stay warm and dry. Thank <laughs> Bye -bye. you very much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.